Hi, my name's Alan Smith, and in this webcast, we're going to use the Azor Custom Vision Service to do image classification based on the Simpsons characters. We'll start out by downloading the Simpsons dataset from Kaggle.com. We'll then create a new Custom Vision Service in the Azor portal. We'll train an image classification model, and we'll then test that model for accuracy. Feel free to treat this webcast as a walkthrough. You can run through this at home. You'll need an Azor account to do this, but there is a free price tier available on the Custom Vision service, so it won't cost you any dollars to do so. So I'm going to browse to Kaggle.com, which is a site that provides some really cool data sets for working with machine learning. I'm going to enter Simpsons in the search, and we're going to select the Simpsons character data set. We can see that this data set contains images of many Simpsons characters, and this is what we're going to use for the image classification. So I'll download this data set, which is a one gigabyte zip file. So that's downloaded now. I can open the data set and I'm going to place it in an AI data folder on my C drive. So it's going to take a while for that zip file to extract. So whilst it's extracting, I'm going to go into the Azor portal and I'm going to create a new resource group. I'll name the resource group Custom Vision Webcasts. And because I'm located in Stockholm, I'm going to drop it in the West Europe data center. So I'm going to browse to the resource group. And in the resource group, I'm going to create a new instance of the Custom Vision service. I'll name this service instance Custom Vision Webcasts. And for the training resource, I'm going to select West Europe. And for the pricing tier, I'm going to select S0, the standard pricing tier. If we're experimenting with this, you can use the free tier, but there's a limit of one free tier per subscription. And I've already got a free tier on this subscription. And I'm going to select the same options for the prediction resource. So let's create this custom vision service. With the service created, I can browse to the service. And in the quick start page, we've got a link to the custom vision portal, which is at customvision.ai. You can see that in the portal, I've got a number of projects that I've created in other custom vision services. I'll create a new project for this webcast. I'll name the project Simpsons Classification Demo, and I'll select the custom vision service that we've just created in the resources section. You can see that we've got a number of options when creating projects. We'll cover these in detail in future webcasts. For this project, I'm going to leave the defaults. This can be a classification project with single tags per image, and the domain is going to be general. So the Simpsons character data set has completed extracting. And we can see that in the data set, we've got a couple of folders. The test set folder contains a number of files for the different Simpsons characters. And these images are going to be used for testing the models that we've created. It's very common in machine learning to separate the training data from the test data. Because when we test the models, we want to be using data that the model has not yet seen. And this gives us a much better indication of the accuracy of the model. Within the dataset folder itself, we've got a large number of folders, one for each of the Simpsons characters that's represented in the dataset. Some of these folders contain over a thousand images, and others will only contain a few. When training a custom vision model, we want to use a balanced dataset. And this means we're going to use a very similar number of images for each character that we're training. And in this demo, I'm just going to do a quick test with the members of the Simpsons family. So back in the portal, I'm going to click on Add Images. I'm going to select the Bart Simpsons folder, copy the name, and then open the folder. And in the folder, I'm going to select the first 100 images. And I'm going to paste the name of the folder as the tag for these images. So I'll click the button to upload the 100 files. And you can see that they were all successfully uploaded. Sometimes you may get a few errors or a few duplicate files. But in this case, everything went very smoothly. So let's take Homer next. I'm going to copy the name of the folder, open the folder, and take 100 images of Homer Simpson. And we'll tag them with the folder name. So those all uploaded successfully. Next, we'll take Lisa, and select 100 images of Lisa, and set the tag name appropriately. Three down, two to go. We'll take Maggie, and do the same process here. And I've speeded up the clip speed, so you don't have to watch me going through all this in real time. 
And last but not least, we'll take March. Great. So now we've got a balanced data set, five characters and a hundred images of each character. We can review these images by selecting the appropriate tag and seeing the images that match that tag. So with the data set created, we can now train the model by clicking on this green train button. When working with training, we've got a couple of options. If you're experimenting or just building a quick proof of concept, you can select quick training, which will probably take around 30 seconds, depending on the number of images that you've got in the training set. For building more production systems, we can select advanced training. And we can specify a number of hours as the training budget, with a minimum being one hour. For this demo, we're just going to select quick training. So the training has started now. And now it's complete. I paused the recording a bit whilst the training was running, but it took about 30 seconds to complete. And you can see that statistics has been generated for the precision, recall and AP of the model. Scrolling down, we can see these statistics for each character. And this gives us an indication of the quality of the model. In future webcasts, we'll look in a lot more detail about what these figures mean. And I'll give you some tips and techniques for improving these statistics. So let's run a quick test on the model that we've created. We've got the option of specifying an image URL or browsing for local files. And I've got plenty of test files in the data set, so I'll select local files. So in the test set folder, I'm going to select one of the images of Bart Simpson. And we can see in the statistics that it's 99.7% sure that it's Bart Simpson, but there's a very small possibility that it could be Maggie. I'm going to scroll down and select an image of Homer. And here we can see that it's 96.7% sure that this is Homer, with a small chance of it being Lisa. So let's try an image of Lisa. And here we can see the prediction is it's 99.2% sure that it's Maggie, with only a 0.7% probability that it is Lisa. So it has failed to correctly classify this image. So let's try another image of Lisa. And here it has made the correct prediction. And this image of Marge has also been predicted correctly. So you can see that it's very quick and easy to work with a custom vision service in the Azure portal. As long as you can find a balanced data set of the images that you want to classify, it only takes a few minutes to create a custom vision service, upload these images and train a model. For more challenging scenarios, you may have to experiment with different image data sets and using more advanced training options. But the portal does provide you with great feedback on the accuracy of the model and makes it very easy to test the model with your own images. In future webcasts, we'll look at doing more advanced things with the custom vision service. We'll look at more advanced training, working with different data sets, working with object detection, and also using the APIs to automate the testing and the training of these models. My name is Alan Smith and I work as a developer, trainer, mentor and evangelist for Active Solution in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm an Azure MVP and I speak at many international conferences. I'm also involved in the organisation of the Cloud Burst Conference and the AI Burst Conference hosted in Stockholm. I specialise in delivering classroom and on-site training in the Microsoft Azure and AI technologies. I also deliver remote training and mentoring. I host seminars and workshops for companies. I've authored a number of Pluralsight courses, and I also speak at conferences. If you're interested in any of the above, feel free to contact me on cloudcast.net at gmail.com.